Hello, welcome back to the Citizen Scientist Workshop. I'm Dr. Sean, and in today's technical note, how to determine the number of molecules in any pure substance. The ability to calculate the number of molecules in a pure substance is a basic science skill. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it for solids and liquids and how to use this technique to work out critical details about the chemicals that you'll be using in your experiments. Calculating the number of molecules in a given sample of a pure material is trivial to do, so long as you know what the substance is. That's because if you know the chemical formula, you can easily calculate the mass of a single molecule. And if you then measure the mass of your sample, you just divide the total mass by the mass of a single molecule, and you've got your answer. So let's do it. Let's calculate the number of molecules in one gram of water. We start by figuring out the mass of a single molecule of water. So, as we all know, the chemical formula for water is H2O, which of course means that it's made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen. Now it turns out that the mass of each type of atom is listed in the periodic table of elements. You'll find it right here. Only it's not listed in grams or kilograms. Rather, it's given in terms of something called an atomic mass unit, or AMU, which is a more convenient way of describing matter as it exists on this tiny scale. I'll explain the atomic mass unit in another video. For today, the only thing you have to know is that one AMU is equivalent to about 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. And so to convert AMU to grams, you just need to multiply by that number. So, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.0 AMU, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16.0 AMU, and that means that the atomic mass of H2O is 18.0 AMU. So, to convert that into grams, which is the unit used by your digital scale, you multiply that by the conversion factor I just gave you, to obtain this fantastically small number. And from here, to calculate the total number of molecules in one gram of water, you simply need to divide the total mass of water that you have by the mass of a single molecule, and we get this fantastically large number. And that's all there really is to it. Easy! So let's do this to discover some critical facts about some of the chemicals you're likely to use as a citizen scientist. In an earlier video, I showed you how to dehydrate certain salts to use them as a desiccant. We use the magnesium sulfate found in Epsom salts. And I said that if the sample is saturated with water, then each molecule of magnesium sulfate in Epsom salts will be bound to seven water molecules. So let's use what we know to test the purity of the Epsom salts I processed and to see exactly how good a drying agent it really is. First, let's see if it's saturated. To check, I place some Epsom salts into a test tube and then add a few drops of distilled water on top and let it sit for a few hours. If the water diffuses through the salt and wets it like this, then it's saturated. If it doesn't, then it isn't. I've never tested a batch of Epsom salts that wasn't saturated, and so your sample will probably pass this test. So let's move on to testing its purity. First, fold a strip of aluminum foil into a makeshift tray, set it on your digital scale, and zero the scale. Then pour about 10 grams of fresh Epsom salts and record the mass. Next, bake it at 480 degrees Fahrenheit or 250 degrees Celsius for an hour or so until it's completely dry. Then let it cool for a few minutes and weigh it again. You now know the mass of the dry salt, and the difference between your two measurements is the mass of the water that escaped. So we started with 10.2 grams of magnesium sulfate, and we drove away 4.5 grams of water. Building on what we just did, it's trivial to calculate the number of water molecules that left the sample. It's this. Now we follow the same procedure to find the number of salt molecules in our sample. First, we figure out the atomic mass of one molecule of magnesium sulfate by consulting the periodic table. So the total atomic mass of magnesium sulfate is 120.4 AMU. The gram mass is therefore this. Now if we assume that store-bought Epsom salt is pure, by which I mean reagent grade magnesium sulfate, then dividing that into the mass of our dried sample would give us the number of said molecules. That would be this. 
So then, to test that assumption, we divide the number of water molecules by the number of salt molecules, and we get 5.2 water molecules per salt molecule. Okay, well, 5.2 certainly isn't 7. So, no, surprise, surprise, the stuff you can buy at your grocery store is not reagent-grade magnesium sulfate. This result illustrates the very important fact that you should always measure the potency of your store-bought chemicals before you repurpose them for your research. But don't worry. In future videos, I'm going to show you ways to purify your chemicals to get them ready for your experiments. So I hope you can see that the ability to count molecules is critical to any kind of serious chemistry, and we'll be using it a lot in upcoming projects. So start experimenting with it yourself and enjoy. You'll find in the description below links to essential tools of science that you need to carry out experiments like this. I really hope you liked this video, and if you did, then don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Also, please subscribe and share this content with your friends and colleagues. For the Citizen Scientist Workshop, I'm Sean Carlson, and I'll see you in the next one.